Hey everybody, welcome to Tent Talk. This is Nancy McCready. Make note that these episodes are archive episodes. It means that they have come from previously recorded podcasts that we've done over the last few years. But they are still very relevant, very necessary, and very provoking in the process of true discipleship. So take a listen to this series, and I hope that it will truly encourage you to go deeper with Him. Enjoy this series on our developmental maturity markers. And by all means, my friends, let's mature. The hour that we live in is calling for it so very, very deeply. And to the pleasure of our Father, I pray that it happens. Love you all. Welcome to Tent Talk, the podcast with Nancy McCready, where we talk about life under the big tent of God's presence and the provoking process of discipleship. Here we go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Tent Talk. This is Nancy McCready. We close out our developmental maturity marker series today as I challenge you to look at and to examine, are you maturing in your anger Or are you becoming the unwilling victim of those who would want to manipulate your anger? Take a listen. I hope it provokes you deeper in your life with God. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Tent Talk. I am so glad that we're together today. Listen to this powerful statement. Hell dreads your fury. That's why... Hell wants to control your fury. Now, I want you to think about this. We have got the anger of unresolved conflicts flooding the streets. And what this means is that where there are unresolved conflicts between people, people groups, races, nations, governments, corporations, ideologies, Wherever there is unresolved conflict, that means that whatever means we've been trying to use to mature ourselves, to grow up, to function in the world, guess what? It hasn't been working. So welcome to the last part of the series on developmental maturity markers. One of the ways that we can know that all of our cleverness, uh, all of our evolving into, uh, you know, our own brands of maturity, our own uh, wokeness, is that eventually what we find is that it hasn't actually resolved the conflict. And then I would submit to you that means that we're still in deep deep controversy with God because we don't like the way he's allowed things, made things. Uh, We don't like how he's handling things. Therefore, more and more that which has always been inside of man from the natural side is emerging more and more and more. And it wants to overthrow anything that it views as a restraint upon what it considers should be its unrestrained freedom of expression. So in this, looking uh, at our developmental maturity markers, I would ask you, uh, have you allowed yourself to mature in the area of being angry? So we've looked at many places in the scripture where Jesus hit his developmental maturity markers. He didn't get stuck because he never... Uh, stayed in an unresolved conflict. He did not foster the natural side of him, uh, which he could have, but he didn't. So therefore, he did not uh, indulge controversies with God. He did not indulge controversies with his father. He uh, stayed dependent upon the father, which is our only hope of actually being able to mature. 
And Jesus stayed in the nature he was born in. You and I had to be born again to be in that nature. But when we do not remain in that real, true, new nature, when we do not handle our anger as the word tells us in Ephesians, be angry but do not sin, what happens is is we either think we can't be angry or we've got to go the full route with it and let it have all of its full expression. But what the word says is be angry but do not sin. Do not give the devil his opportunity. Because you see, one of the lowest forms uh, of expression is immature anger. When a child throws a temper tantrum, everybody says, okay, you know, they're a child. We've got to help them walk through that. But when adults, full-grown adults, are throwing a fit, they are having a temper tantrum, they are undone by their anger, Now, unfortunately, they can be controlled by outside forces because they are, and maybe rightly so, there are things to be angry about. There are things that need to be uh, taken a look at. But when that person is in immature anger, they become easily controlled by others who have other agendas. So what happens is, is that these outside forces when they see you out of control, whether that's one person or if that's an, uh, an entire you know, people group or if it's uh, you know, controllers of society behind the scenes that nobody can see, whatever view you take of it, but an outside force realizes, ah, now they're vulnerable. Now they're all awakened and they're raw. And I, let's rub those bitternesses to our advantage. And unfortunately, the person that remains furious, but they haven't yet matured, if you will, in that focused fury, they've not allowed that fury now to be harnessed in a way that can actually bring something constructive forward. They become basically the unwilling victim or the willing victim of others who would control them, others who say, yeah, you should be angry about that. Yeah, that was so, so unfair. And now here it goes. And it begins to literally explode upon the scene. And what eventually happens is they used your anger to gain uh, undue advantage over you. And eventually, once you've served their purposes, they're done with you. They cast you off. You're still left, literally, like in a heap and with no real um, way to move forward. But you see, when the Lord comes and he says, now be angry, but do not sin. He's saying, be angry. There are true things to be angry about. People say, Nancy, would God really say that? Well, God had wrath, and God uh, fully displayed that wrath, but he did it in a way that brought forth the salvation of the world. He did not just have a reckless explosion upon the world. He, in the person of Jesus Christ, found a son who was willing to be bruised, Mm, You talk about maturity. A son willing to be bruised so that all wrath could be satisfied, so then that all righteousness could be fulfilled, that the door could be opened between God and man. Man could be reconciled to God. God is now at peace through the blood of Jesus Christ with all of mankind. Unfortunately, mankind, when it doesn't enter in through that door of Jesus Christ, doesn't enter in through that blood, doesn't enter in through the cross, it does not find itself reconciled back to God so that it can move forward and go into the fullest expressions of destiny and and real true authority. So you see, this is why the enemy dreads your fury. That's why he wants to control your fury. He dreads your anger. He dreads that you'll awaken out of your slumber and follow God 
throughout the process of dealing with your anger. He wants to circumvent that. He wants to short circuit that. He wants to catch you in those early days. He always loves to catch us in the early, naive, gullible days so that he can gain power over us, whether we're three years old, 13 years old, 33 or 63, whatever case it may be, the enemy loves to catch you when you just are about to awaken, when you're just about to get in touch with that anger, because he wants to control that. He wants to take the bitterness of it, the resentment of it. He wants you to get stuck in it. He wants you to be attempting to gain um, retribution and revenge. And we have to be those who say, wait just a minute. I think I'm going to ask God to mature me in the midst of my anger to bring me into that place of what does it really mean to be angry but not to sin. So here at Tent Talk, we believe that sin, according to the scripture, is more an unholy force that continues to operate through the body and through deception rather than it still being the nature of Christians that they just have, have to continually cycle in and out of its domination. You see, 40 out of 41 times in the book of Romans, sin is a noun. It is a thing. It is a force and a power that may still be present within your body, but it is not still your nature. Therefore, this sin, this power, wants to keep you deceived and it wants to keep talking to you in, your, in the sound of your own voice, so it sounds like it's you, but it's not you. And it wants to continue to master you, just like it talks about it in Genesis 4. It says, be careful now, sin is crouching at the door, and it wants to master you. It wants to be able to jump out. It wants to be able to take over at all times so that it can run you. And its very nature is to have you meeting all of your need, taking care of yourself, being your own protector, your own defender. Uh, and uh, it wants you operating independently from the Father. That's its core nature, is come outside of God. You know, God is keeping things from you. You're going to have to step out and be God and take care of things. Its entire lure is to get you to act independent from the Father. Why? Because that's what gives it all of its ability to control you and therefore everything through you. And if it can control entire cultures and, and nations and systems, yeah, it wants to get everything being handled independent of God because that's what puts it in charge. So if you are angry, but you do not sin, it means you're angry, but you do not handle your anger independent from God. You take your anger and you get to him. This is that developmental maturity marker is the issue isn't that I'm never angry. I'm never, you know, upset about anything. I never notice any injustice. No, I notice it, but I know my father has handled it. And I'm going to go to him and I'm going to take my need for this to be dealt with to him, to what he has provided for himself. How did God provide for his own wrath? His own anger was he sent a son, a willing son who got up from his throne in Philippians 2, stripped himself of all of his rightful privileges and dignity because he was equal to God and he came and became a human himself. He lived perfectly. He was born perfect in nature and then he lived in perfect maturing dependency, the abiding that all of us are called to, to an abiding dependency which caused him to mature so that he never stepped out and let sin have any domination over him so that there could come a moment in time in the fullness of 
time prophesied in Genesis 3, spoken of in Galatians 4, lived out throughout the scripture where Jesus basically looked at sin and said, now you come here. I have given you not one shred, not one moment in my life have I allowed you any domination so that for this moment I came. So you get over here and I'm going to become sin and then I'm going to pay you every single penny that you're owed by I'm going to let you have full sway over me so that now you are paid and my father is satisfied and the debt of every single human being, every injustice, every unfair treatment, every vile touch of sexual abuse, every foul word of verbal abuse, every single act of sin, every single bit of it, every inch of sexual sin, everything, I'm going to become it and I'm going to pay it. And when I get up out of that grave, there is going to be a new race of people, a new breed called the new man. And they are going to move in oneness with the father, with every need now met by the father, actively, abidingly, powerfully. They're going to have their need so met that they're going to start to mature and they too will live like me and live dependent upon the Father. And they will get up and they will be the force of life, righteousness, power and peace and reconciliation. They will be up on their feet. They will be awakened and they will be matured by love. Their faith is going to be activated by love. And it's not going to be some human sad form of love. It's going to be the love of the Father. You see, the same thing now that flowed in Jesus now flows in us. And this is our hope of maturing. So you better believe hell dreads your fury. Because he knows if you are angry and you do not sin, he knows his days are numbered. Because now you are awakened. Now you are abiding. Now every need is met and you are actually flourishing deep inside. And now you can step into any situation with anybody at any time and do anything that the Father calls you to as you continue to mature. You see, in the kingdom of God, maturity is to the degree and the measure of your dependency. The more you depend, the more you abide, the more you draw from the very life of Jesus himself inside of your spirit. You see, that's your real life. And if we would come out of self by the power of the cross, and then if we would embrace the way of the cross, their way of life, God's way of life, And that begins to mature and begins to open up and the fruit of it begins to be displayed and lived out and and seen and known. There can be a whole race of people born of Jesus Christ who could say, if you've seen me, you've seen my Father. And it will literally crucify all of that cleverness of man all of that self-made ways of trying to handle our anger, our need for justice, which perverts into revenge rather than reconciliation. You see, I want to add to this number of maturing sons. I want to see uh, that being added daily. But as I watch and as I see the unresolved conflicts flooding the street that things that are happening are triggering all of that. Why? Well, because I don't want to chastise people for it. What I want to do is be able to be a part of the solution, which is that I see that whatever means by which you've been trying to repress it, suppress it, depress it, express it, I see that your true need has not yet been met in the person of Jesus, in the finished work of his cross. Therefore, you do not know the Father, and that you can have 
everything that your heart is crying out for, but you must get to the right source so that other forces may not be able to continue to manipulate you, therefore keeping you down, keeping you at a lower level of freedom, which ends up not being freedom at all. For more information on Nancy, please visit nancymccrady.com or follow her on social media at nbmccrady. We want to be those who come out of old muscle memory. We want to be those who come out of immature muscle memory where when we get triggered, we go back to our previous ways and our previous habits. Doesn't take very much. And now we see it all spilling forward. I don't want to chastise those people. I don't want to put a sock in their mouth. I don't want to shut anybody up. I say, let out your cry. But will you let out your cry? And I'm speaking to every one of you, and I am literally declaring this to nations, is who are you letting your cry out to? Who is in charge of your cry right now? What source are you taking it to? Because if we're going to mature, we've got to mature in our anger. We've got to mature by going to the Father. You see, when Jesus turned over the tables, which he didn't do every day, it wasn't his manner of life to go around thinking that the anger of man would promote the righteousness of God. But there was a point, there was a time where he went in and that anger was so harnessed because Jesus wasn't there because he was personally being denied something. His father was being denied his own house. And that anger, you see, led Jesus to be willing to be the very thing that he proclaimed. Jesus became the one who was willing Will there now be in this hour of history, in this generation, will there be rising up mature sons, maturing sons, male and female, both of every race, tribe, every, every nation that will be unified now in the, in the very provision of our Father in the cross? Ephesians 2 says, He brought those who were formerly hostile to each other. He brought them now and broke down every barrier by making them one new man through the cross of Jesus Christ. In Ephesians 2, in the Message Bible, it says that here God himself brought all hostilities, all divisions, uh, everything, and he brought them to reconciliation in the cross of Jesus Christ. And then up out of that, resurrection came an entirely new kind of human being, giving every person a fresh start. That we get up and now there is being created within us, I pray, new muscle memory. Muscle memory being built into us in the spirit so that we get up and we no longer live as victims. We live now as those who have received everything that we have need of. And now we're being fed food that's going to mature us. And the muscles within our spirit are beginning to grow. We are getting up. And we are no longer requiring of others to do something for us that God himself has already supplied. We unhook from the whole human race being our source. And we now go to the Father. The Father takes care of his sons. You see, the word says in 1 Corinthians 13, 11, when I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. But now that I have become a man, and I'm going to suggest to you that Paul was saying, now that I have become the new man, I am done with childish ways and I have put them aside. It will tell us, put away childish things because now you are a man. And when it says to put them away, it means to fire them. It means that I no longer have need of your services. You see, I hired those childish ways, and now I get to fire those childish ways. You see, nobody else can really show up and do that for me. But when we do not put away our childish things, what ends up happening is 
imposters are able to control children. That's what it tells us in Ephesians 4. Now, like never before, my friends, if we're going to truly mature into Christ, we need the full five-fold ministry giftings to operate according to why God gave them, which was to mature the body of Christ, to bring us to the full stature of Christ. Because this one new man, this fresh start that we've been given, is that now we put away childish things and we are also told to put on Christ. And what that means is that you plunge deep into him and then you rest in him. I can rest because I have been given everything that I need. We need to be weaned off the bottle of immaturity and we need to be brought to the full seating at the table of our father so that we can be fed uh, meat, so that we can eat what is going to cause us to now be able to discern what is really happening. The maturing and the discernment, you see, comes from getting up to the table of your father and beginning to let him be the source of everything that goes on inside of you and therefore everything that he's destined that's going to come through you. You see, it's time to stop trying to pin the tail on the donkey And it's time to pin the tail on your destiny. Life always tries to disorient you, spin you around, blindfold you like the old children's game, pin the tail on the donkey. And then you wander around disoriented looking for who can I pin the blame on. This isn't about blame. This isn't about if I can find the right person to attack, then somehow I can get from them what I need. No, you cannot. There is no person, no matter how they may have wounded you, there is no person who can do for you what the Father does. Now, once you get to the Father, listen to me carefully. Once you get to the Father and you start to meet your developmental maturity markers and you begin to grow up because you're putting away childish things and putting on Christ who is, who is life inside of you, now you will be able to go forth more and more into your assignments. And listen to me carefully. If your God-ordained assignment is to step forward and to have um, an impact and an influence in shifting the systems that run nations so that now those systems reflect the true justice of God, then get to it. But get to maturing personally first so that when you go out in that assignment, it doesn't get hijacked And you start trying to simply get from people what only God can give. Lead others to him personally, and then let there be a band of jealous sons, a company of jealous sons that begin to say, we're going to get up to the high mountains of government and the high mountains of education and the high mountains and the gates of influence of Uh, business and media and entertainment and sports and every sphere of cultural influence, let it be that the sons of God who are so satisfied in him and so free that they can actually begin to be the influencers of him and for him to many who are truly in the streets with their unresolved conflicts because they haven't brought their conflict and their controversy to the cross of Jesus Christ. Let's get them to him. And then we will have a mighty, mighty vanguard of people going before in true leadership from every color, every uh, you know tribe, every tongue, Uh, male and female, shoulder to shoulder, walking together as true co-heirs of the grace of God. Let every person be that new creation. Let them be that new type of human being where everybody gets a fresh start. Everybody is brought to the Father, made full and mature. And we go out into our assignments to truly see culture influenced by the kingdom of God because it's flowing in our own hearts. 
My friends, God has a plan. And we must be those who have been rectified, who have been put right with him by being deeply satisfied in the cross of Jesus Christ so that then we can go forth and really, truly in the everyday living within our nations, within our states, within our regions, let the true church of Jesus Christ be filled with his presence And then that presence then will begin to fill and flood our streets. Wow. It can happen. Do you believe this? I believe it can happen, but it has to first happen personally within us. Do not let your life be hijacked by lesser things. Do not let your conflicts um, be uh, resolved through lesser things. Let's get to the cross of Jesus Christ, the provision of our Father. Remember, if it was enough for God the Father, then it's going to be enough for me. And when I start eating that food, I'm going to begin to think like Him, talk like Him, live like Him, want to see His way of life become the freely chosen way of people in every place, at every sphere, in every nation. This can happen. I know it can. It's my assignment to disciple nations to see this happen. And I want to be a part of promoting that and provoking that within you. So we've got to be those, don't we, that begin to really, truly think like God if we're going to live like God. So don't let any vain philosophies grab hold of you during this time. Because now that you're awakened... Let's now mature in your anger. Let's mature and meet those developmental markers just like Jesus did because then he became the solution. He became one who didn't just spout it off and flip a table and then walk off and self-indulge. No, his anger had matured and now he was angry, if you will, because his father was being denied what he wanted and what he desired. And Jesus said, Father, I will be the very solution to the problem. You can live it out through me. It can happen through you and me now, because we are now those who are sons to God through the finished work of Jesus Christ. So let's go forth and live in that maturing, abiding oneness that Jesus prayed for in John 17. Come on, my friends, let's live the life, and let's let it be what floods the streets of our cities, our towns, our nations, because it's what's flooding us and satisfying us. All right? So I love you all. Thanks for being a part of this developmental maturity marker series. Can't wait for the next time that we're together. If you'd like information on how to book Nancy McCready for an event or speaking engagement, visit nancymccready.com.